Hello again. Today we're talking about when to visit Alaska. We constantly have people asking, when's the best time to come up there? So our reply is always, it depends on what you want to do. So we're making a video to hopefully help you decide. We're going to try to break it down by season and month. In Alaska, we've got winter, June, July, and August. I'm just kidding. We've got all four seasons here. Let's take a look. Alaskans call this time breakup. This is when all the ice from the winter starts to melt and break up and float down the rivers. It really creates a lot of flooding in low areas and the whole state really becomes a big mud pit for a couple months. The rivers are all really high and they flow really fast around this time of year. If you're just a recreational kayaker, then stay out of the rivers this time of year in Alaska. Unless you take a guided trip, they'll keep you in an area where there's not a lot of debris in the river. A lot of people see all the mud on the ground and want to take their off-road vehicles and their ATVs out. Just remember to be careful and take care of the trails when you're out. Just the smallest rut that you make with your vehicle during breakup can really ruin the trail for everyone else the rest of the year. With all the melting water running down the mountain, that little rut you made will turn into a six foot deep rut by the end of breakup. That being said, you still can get out in some areas and have a lot of fun on your ATVs and be responsible. Just don't forget a set of rubber boots for when you get stuck. Now, April and May is a great time around Alaska to go hiking around sea level. If you're into bird watching, this is the time when all the birds start migrating back to Alaska. Cranes, geese, and duck flock back to the coastal flats. This is also a great time for whale watching. This time of year, whales migrate past Resurrection Bay, just south of Seward. Mid to late May is when the bears start to wake up from hibernation. Now these bears are definitely a sight to see, but remember, they're waking up and they're very hungry, so you need to stay out of their way and be very cautious. Yes, that brings us to summer, everybody's favorite time of year. This is the time to come if you're into festivals or markets or just about anything outdoors. Fishing is at its peak, from deep sea fishing for fish like halibut and rockfish, to landing Alaskan salmon on the coast or up rivers. If you enjoy fishing, you definitely don't want to miss it in Alaska. This is the perfect time of year to kayak, canoe, use your stand-up paddleboard, or just swim in these beautiful lakes. The water is amazing, and the backdrops are unreal. I can't stress enough, if you like hiking, biking, camping, taking pictures outdoors, this is the time of year to come here. Our first time camping here, we went on a little hike in the morning, picked blueberries, and made blueberry pancakes. So we picked all the berries about a short three minute walk from our campsite. As you can see, if you want to do anything from camping to hiking glaciers to hiking up mountains, fishing, swimming, kayaking, whatever you want to do outdoors, the summer is the time to do it. Now that brings us to fall. Fall is arguably the most beautiful time of the year. All the leaves start to change color and drop as the temperature drops. This is definitely one of my favorite times of year to get outside and take some pictures. It's also my favorite time to get out and do some off-roading. Wherever you see red on the ground, that's all fresh blueberries. The biggest reason that this is my favorite time of the year to go off-roading is because normally, in the beginning of the summer, even into the middle of the summer, the snow is so low on the mountains that you can't get up in these areas. In the fall, when all the snow melts, right before it starts snowing again, you can get way up into the mountains, way up by the peaks. In this particular area, you can get way up to the top and you can look down on a glacier about 2,000 feet below you. Check this out. The views are absolutely amazing. I highly recommend to go off-roading way back in the backcountry in Alaska. I almost forgot to mention that in the fall, the salmon are still running. In the early fall, you can still catch four species of salmon in the rivers in Alaska. Don't forget to tell us down in the comments if you've ever been to Alaska. If you have been here, what did you do while you were here? Next up is hunting. A lot of people come to Alaska to hunt. You can hunt everything from moose to rabbit to birds and everything in between. Don't forget about the big grizzlies out here caribou, including the 40-mile herd, and wolves. Hunting might not be your thing, but up here in Alaska, over 25% of the population up here hunts. That does not include the thousands of out-of-state hunters that come here every year. Okay, this brings us to winter. Before moving here, I thought winter would be the worst season in Alaska. 
There's just something about the thought of 20 hours of darkness during the day that just didn't get me real excited. Surprisingly, it ties with summer for my favorite season. All right, check this out. Let me show you why. Now, the other seasons have things like hunting and fishing and hiking and all these amazing things that are just one-of-a-kind experiences up here in Alaska. But the winters here just blow me away with how unique they are to Alaska. All right, let's check it out. All right, Alaska has ice caves. This is one of many that you can walk to. This is about a three mile round trip to walk out to it. The river that's running underneath is actually frozen in the winter, so you can walk all the way back there. You walk way, way back into the back, and then you crawl down on your hands and knees and go under the ice, and then it pops up into this huge room that's just a huge, huge ice cave. It's amazing. Like I said, this is one of many. You can walk back into a lot more. There are some that you have to walk into. There are some that you have to kayak back into. They're all over the place and they're just absolutely amazing. Next is dog sledding or mushing. It's an amazing experience. It's a lot of fun. There are a lot of places up here that do dog sledding and do tours and all that. Not to mention, there are a lot of dog sled races, including the Iditarod. Down in the description, I'll leave a link to our other video, Five Things to Do in Fairbanks in the Winter. Check that one out when you're finished watching this. Next are hot springs. You haven't experienced an Alaskan winter until you've gone to hot springs when it's 40 below. This hot springs is about 50 miles outside of Fairbanks, but there are some hot springs up here that are off the beaten path that you have to take a snowmobile to. This one is called Chena Hot Springs. It's very touristy, but some of the others are way out in the middle of nowhere, so travel at your own risk. When you're done relaxing in the hot springs, you can go to the ice bar. Like the name says, everything there is ice. The bar, the glasses, the plates, the seats, the floor, everything is ice in this place. Now finally, we've made it to the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights. I won't get into what it is exactly or what causes it, but what I will say is that if you haven't seen the Northern Lights in person, that's definitely got to be on your bucket list. It's like curtains of neon light dancing around the sky. The aurora can be forecasted. There are apps to help you out with that. Just like the weather, it's not 100% accurate until the day of. We've had friends and family come from all the way out of state they stayed with us and it was cloudy the entire time and they weren't able to see any of it. So when should you visit Alaska? My answer is you need to visit Alaska twice. Once in the summer to get all those amazing outdoor activities in and once in the winter to experience the northern lights and all those unique activities to an Alaskan winter. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out.